Coming up next on the Jeff Crilly Show, we're going to put a spotlight on a wonderful nonprofit here in DFW that serves adults with autism. Their journey just ahead. Many are predicting that the worst is yet to come, which is unfortunate, said one person here. Until now, they've enjoyed the reputation of being the nation's icebox. Watched a burglar in his home this morning by webcam. As a journalist of over 25 years, stories are what make my world turn. Reporting live from the Dallas Newsroom tonight, Jeff Crilly, Fox 4 News. But in 2008, I took the jump from my familiar life and started a PR firm from my home. We're talking about anyone with a camcorder like the one I'm using becomes a television network. We started slowly growing the company and we now have over a hundred clients and we've branched into the world of live digital broadcasting. I now own eight different TV studios and have a huge team. And the stories that I now get to share are sometimes the most important of my life. Life has a funny way of coming around full circle. This is the Jeff Crilly Show. Well, if you are a parent who has an autistic child, it's all-consuming. You're spending almost every waking hour thinking about ideas to make your life and your child's life easier. And when that child becomes an adult, it doesn't get any easier. You're still parenting. And to talk about that today, uh, Jamie Wheeler and Lisa Christian, they're with Austin's Autistic Adventures. Thanks for coming on the show. Thank you Thank so much you. for having us. Thank you. Yeah. Well, let's talk about your nonprofit and, and, and talk about the need. Let's start with you, Jamie. All right. Well, when my daughter graduated from high school in 2015, she had a million things to do. She had lots of friends. She was in choir. And literally the day she graduated, all of that stopped, every single bit of it. Um, I knew there had to be other adults like her out there with similar issues. So I started a social program in 2017, which has now grown to include over 93 families, and we really hope to be expanding more. That's amazing. Lisa, let's bring you in to this. Uh, you you have a child with autism. Tell us about your life. Um, sorry. My son is the youngest of four. He is uh, 25 and he has been my life since he was three years old when he was diagnosed. Uh, he has finished school. He's got potential to work a part-time job, but it means me quitting my job. So I am looking online and pops up Austin's Autistic Adventures article on Facebook from the Dallas Morning News. And I immediately called and contacted Jamie and said, how do I get in? Wow. It's a, it's a beautiful organization. And Jamie, you recently created a wonderful overview video. Let's go ahead and roll that. Hi, my name is Jamie Wheeler. I'm the president and founder of Austin's Autistic Adventures, a social program for adults on the autism spectrum. I founded our program in 2017 because my daughter had graduated from high school two years prior and found herself with literally nothing to do. There's just not a lot out there for adults on the autism spectrum. And I watched my beautiful, vibrant, lovely daughter just kind of collapse in on herself. I think a big misconception in the general public is that people with autism don't wish to be social, that they self-isolate, that they don't want interaction. That's not true of almost every autistic person I've met. They self-isolate because the world is so difficult to navigate, but they don't want to be alone. I knew that there had to be thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands of young adults on the autism spectrum that were in the same situation. When we founded in 2017, we had just three families in our program. Now we have over 90 families actively participating in our social skills program. There's nothing like it around here that I've ever seen. And it has done such a world of good for all of these kids that were involved. Most of them before this, they spent their whole day alone in their room on their computer or their phone there are some of them that never had a birthday party and they're in their 20s and never had a birthday party for just them with friends until this group so the first thing i wanted to do was address affordability i wanted people of all income levels to be able to participate the second criteria was flexibility almost all of us are working Almost all of us have additional children to care for. The third thing I thought that was needed was frequency. 
the chief problem with autism is the social component. And to get better socially, you have to practice out in different social situations, not in a classroom, not in some sort of contained program, but when they are out in the world, having to confront what the world is. And now for a lot of people with autism, that's sensory issues, lights, sounds, noise, crowds, babies, children, but that's what the world is. So by going out in two hour spurts, five days a week, as many times as you can attend, like anything else, it'll desensitize you to those kinds of problems. I've really come to realize how much he enjoys being with these friends and going out and about out into the world, which was for a long time something that I didn't think he really enjoyed because it was kind of overwhelming for him sometimes. It's an organization that's very, very dear to our hearts, really meeting a need that was exactly what we needed at the time. That's what we've created here, a community not just for the kids, but for each other as parents, because nobody knows what we go through except us. We can just relax for a minute and be with each other and help each other. It maybe doesn't seem like a big thing, but it really is a big thing. She's carved a place out for them. And initially it was just the social thing. And then now that has evolved into having the thrift store and the art. It's amazing. Um, I've watched quite a few of the members just completely blossom in, in certain areas because of exposure to activities that have been facilitated by us as Autistic Adventures. Wow, what a beautiful video. It did, you did a great job really, um, I think, educating uh, people who don't have an autistic child what, it, what it's like to be the parent of an autistic child. Um, Jamie, what's your favorite story of, of a person you've helped? Oh, wow, there's so many, but I have to go with my daughter's boyfriend, Travi. Um, his mom, Brenda, was in that video just a minute ago. When Travi came to us in 2017, he was very low verbal, almost nonverbal. And because of his involvement in the group, he is fully conversational now. He and my daughter have been dating for five years. They talk on the phone every day. They text all the time. Those were things that he didn't, he didn't even use his phone except to watch videos on. So it's been really lovely to see that love between them develop. But honestly, every single kid, and we do call them kids because you know, um, that comes into our program changes so fundamentally if they work the program, right? Sure. And to get social skills built up, you have to come frequently. So our families that do come, they know they're not just coming for bowling or swimming. They know that they're coming to enhance those social skills because that's what's lacking in autism. It's not a intelligence issue. It's a social dysfunction. So in my estimation, What's happening with job placement programs are they're putting the cart before the horse. Yes. They are putting them into positions where they are low-skilled, low-labor. This makes their autistic behaviors increase, not decrease. So they lose even jobs that they manage to get, and there aren't many of those. 85% of the spectrum is unemployed, again. So um, it's just a real good place. Um, Lisa, one of the things that jumped out at me is it looked like one of those um, uh, trips was to Pinstack, and I've been there, and there's a lot of lights. And yeah. <laughs> I mean, yes. Uh, t tell us about why that's important to an autistic, autistic adult. The uh, desensitization. Desensit oh, I'm going to skip that. Sorry. <laughs> desensitization. <laughs> yeah. Let's forget that said. word. Okay. Um, desensitizing the um, autistic adult or autistic child, you really need to start young, I found that with my own experience with Justin, that if I gave in to everything that gave, made him throw a tantrum, he would still be throwing those tantrums today. Right. I mean, you have to break that cycle with exposure. And we um, have managed to do that. We go to a lot of noisy places or um, intentionally. intentionally. Um, there's a lot going on and we help them to cope. Sometimes uh, members can only tolerate a short period of time. They may not make the whole two hours at first, but they will um, ad eventually adapt to it. 
And you have amazing outings. Uh, one of the favorite ones that I found was an outdoor riding event. Let's go ahead and roll that tape. like a wonderful day. Okay, what, what, really you, what are some of your favorite memories from that day? Um, watching the kids feed them carrots was funny because a lot of them have animal mm -hmm. issues. And so trying to get them to, to give a carrot was and Get fun. close enough to the animal <laughs> yeah. for the animal to take the carrot. And, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so they were, they did really well with that. Um, get, you know, getting up on the horse, you know, and, and equestrian events are, are, you know, there's a lot of stables that work with people with disabilities and it's a very beneficial thing, but it does take work to get them again, accustomed to that. So absolutely. We went on your Facebook page and found some amazing photographs in your gallery. We're going to go through some of them and I want you to just comment on, uh, let's start with this one, um, artwork. Uh, art is a really important component of our program. Um, we offer a 70% commission to all work sold. Um, they have done amazing work. Six of our artists were just featured in the Gainesville Area Visual Arts uh, Jury Competition and four of them won. Their works were not um, labeled as um, special needs or anything. They were just entered in the competition. So yeah, we've found a lot of success. That's one of the avenues that we're trying to create for people on the spectrum who may never be able to work a traditional nine to five job like, or even like mm. Kroger or something like that. That's just not their personality, yeah. but they have amazing creativity. Okay. And we, sure. we've been really pleased to see the, some of the artwork coming from our group. And well, this is board games. Yeah. Board games and pizza, one of, one of our other popular events. Um, we hold it in a sports bar where there are customers. We don't have it exclusively to ourselves. They have to be patient for the wait staff. They uh, have to um, cooperate with each other and interact with each other. We kind of... Um, have a lot of different options. You'll see dominoes. We do uh, Farkle and we also do Uno. It just uh, really depends on, we kind of mix it up in, in the group. Martial arts. Yeah. Martial arts is wonderful. This is exclusive for our group. Uh, shout out to Tony Rios at My Martial Arts. He works with adaptive programs. Um, our members have been taking martial arts lessons for six years definitely helps their um, concentration, their ability to follow instructions, again, to be patient and take turns. And of course, the strength training is also helpful, but I think Lisa would agree with me, but it's the mental that's so important yes. with martial yes. arts. Mm -hmm. And do you want to talk about this? This is oh, your no, event. That was my <laughs> event. Uh, Lunar Golf, that was one of the places that we have gone a couple of times that gets requested by our members for birthday parties. Um, they love, they, Lunar Golf has been awesome uh, with us. They let them take their time. They let them have multiple turns. And uh, the kids just love going there and, and celebrating their birthdays. And if I could just jump in here too, building community is what we are all about. We really want to have business owners know us and for our kids to know them. So, for example, we go to Altitude Trampoline Park in Richardson quite often. 
We know the owner there. She plays the music they like. She knows everything they need. So we don't come in there. Um, I, I can't. I can't think how to explain it. I'm sorry. Um, we don't come in there with a preconceived notion that we're going to befriend these business owners, but we we do, and they've supported us in many and different endeavors because they see what good we're doing. Yeah, obviously you guys are a nonprofit and you need donations, so we're going to give each of you time to give kind of a final word. Uh, let's start with you, Lisa. This program um, is based on the fact that there's a lot of things out there that are too expensive for most families when it comes to autism treatment, autism support. Uh, support. Uh, there is a great need for this program, and we're getting to the verge of reaching so many more people through podcasts like this, <laughs> and we really need to have more financial support from the philanthropic community because we don't put it on the backs of our parents at all. Our program is affordable. That's one of the main things that we've tried to keep it at. And we really, it's the good goodness of others that, that has kept us going this long. Okay, Jamie, we'll give you the final word. Every parent in our program will tell you how life-changing it has been for them. And I really hope some people will understand that we are the vast middle, that we are the unseen population. When my daughter was younger, people used to tell me, um, don't worry about it because we're all the autistic adults. And when she was five or six or seven, I thought, well, yeah, you're right. They must grow out of it. They don't grow out of it. What's happening is that they're shut up in their rooms and their homes by themselves because most people are working age that have young adults. And like Lisa said, it's either we work or they work. And the families we serve are generally middle income to lower income families who cannot afford group homes or community housing, which community housing runs about $75,000 a year. Wow. Group homes on average run about $2,000 a year. Now, I don't know about you, but most middle class and lower middle class families cannot afford that. Sure. If 85% aren't going to college and 85% aren't working, that's where they are. And they have so much to give this world, so much. And we just need a few people to see that and understand it and support us. We are not from a therapy background. I was a former literature professor. Lisa was in retail and doing insurance and other things. So we have just, through sheer will, <laughs> gotten this program this far, but we do need help. Wow. What an inspiring segment. Thank you so much for being on the show. We're going to end with the website, which is austinsautisticadventures.squarespace.com. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you, Jeff. We appreciate you having you. us. That's it for now. We'll see you next time.